Wonderful. It is a pleasure to welcome to the show the starting goalie for the University of Maryland women's team. It's Emily Sterling. Emily, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing really well. Anytime we can talk lacrosse goalie for an hour, I'm going to put that in the doing well category. So here we are. It's going to be great. I agree. I'm really excited for this. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of going back to the very beginning, do you remember the very first time you jumped into goal? Yes. Yeah, so I was selected to be part of like an all-star team and when I was like 10, 11 years old. And we were just put into a tournament just for fun. We were all just a bunch of like athletic little girls who were just having fun. And um, our coach needed a goalie. They were like, who wants to hop in? And I was all about it. I was like, let me, let me do it. I want to try it out. Why not? And I just remember going in and I was just thinking, all right, I don't have any expectations right now. Let's just play. Like, let's just have some fun. And next thing you know, I was making all these saves and I was like, this is so fun. My mom's over on the sideline, completely a wreck. She's like, no, like you're never going back in goal. And I'm like, mom, I'm going back in goal. I was like, I loved it. I'm going back. And so it was like a little tournament and they were like, Em, do you want to play goalie for the rest of the tournament? I was like, absolutely. I'm all about it. And I never looked back since then. That's great. What, what do you think? Uh, well, two questions. What, what did you love about it so much? And, and two, what do you think made you, you know, such a natural uh, at goal? So what I love about it is that there's only two people on the field that do like that do the position. Like there's one on each side. There's one on a team. You can have maybe like max, like five goalies on a team, like once you get to college, but that's about it. Like you don't have a lot of people playing the position that you're playing. And I think that's so awesome. There's like a certain like pride that you wear about that, that you know that like you're one of the very few people who are able to step in the goal and like watch all these shots come at you. And I think that's super special. And it's like a certain sense of pride you get to like carry around, which I think is awesome. And um, what made the position so fun to me or when I felt so natural about it, I actually didn't know this about until like about last year when my mom was talking about it with me, she said that after that first game that I played, I like went over to her and I was like her and my dad and I was like, that was so fun, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, Em, what were you thinking in there? And I told her, I was like, well, I didn't have expectations. I was just playing. And then the fact that I was like, okay, maybe if I can only let in like under five goals, we have a good chance of winning. So let's just hold to that. And like, that was my goal. And she was like, you were 11 years old. I don't know how you were thinking. Let's just hold them to under five goals and we'll have a good shot at winning. And she was like, from that moment, I knew that like you weren't getting out of the goal ever. (laughs) That's hilarious. That is quite an advanced thought for an 11 year old. Um, You know, and I mean, it's something, you know, you work with high school and college goalies to have that mentality of like, hey, you're going to give up some goals. If I can keep them to under five, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're giving our team a great shot to win. And you had that at age 11, which is amazing. Um, I loved what you said there about, you know, about, you know, about, about the goalie position and there being so few. It's like we have this spotlight on us. You're stepping into the spotlight and and you know, with that comes great responsibility, right? And a lot of pressure, but at the same time, you know, it also um, brings you opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. The opportunity to be great, um, which I, which I love so much about this position. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Did your mom eventually calm down on the sidelines? Because I know, you know, it's a very common thing for, for, I, I say it in jest, but it's a very common thing for, for lacrosse goalie moms and dads, more, more the moms than the dads, but, Absolutely. you know, you know, to go, to go a little bit, uh, to get a little bit nervous on the sidelines. So what were her? Oh, for sure. So it's actually funny. My mom and my dad are the complete opposite. My dad is just like down in the corner. He's listening to music. He's relaxed. He's just watching. My mom's in the stands. She still gets nervous to this day. She's like, oh, like you can hear her. Like, like whenever I, like I say the ball or something, you hear her go, oh, or ah, and like just like little sound effects. Like my, we, my sister and I always laugh at it, but she's relaxed a little bit, but not as much as I would expect her to after like 10 years of playing the position. Yeah, that's funny. So 10 years in, she's still got a little bit, a little yep. bit of uh, anxiety watching her little that's girl, sure. her little girl in goal. That's great. Um, so you grew, you grew up in Maryland, um, you know, hotbed of lacrosse. Um, who, you know, how did you go about learning to make saves? Were there some camps? Were there some coaches that you had, uh, some people that you watched? How did you go about, you know, learning how to be a, a goalie? 
Yeah. So when I started, I didn't really like know what was going on. I didn't realize how big of a commitment it would be. So after that all-star game, we were kind of at the age where we could start like playing travel. So the coach was like, guys, like we played really well together. How about we like try to make a travel team? So we did. And we started playing for the Bel Air Mila like travel league. And through that, they like offered goalie training with Scott Benkowski, who to this day is still my trainer. So at first, like, I wasn't sure. I was like, am I that this committed to it to start all this training? Like I'm 11 years old. I'm not really sure what's going on. So then I started training with him and I fell in love with it. I thought it was so fun. Like the drills were just so much different than anything that I'd been doing, like lacrosse wise in any sort of practice. Like we weren't like learning how to throw and catch. We were learning how to make saves. We were learning how to do what other kids weren't able to do. We were throwing outlets on the run. We were hitting small targets from far, far distances. Like I thought it was so cool. So I trained with him. I still train with him to this day. But that was like the main source of everything. Like I always watched lacrosse, but I didn't necessarily like pick stuff up when I was that young. So definitely just through like, just playing around, like my dad and my sister and I would always go out and shoot. And then I would always go with coach Scott and he would always just be taking reps on me. And I thought it was awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's great. You can get such great training at that at that young age. And then not only that, to have your dad and your sister to uh, to get some reps yeah, <laughs> and, and make it fun. Right. Because that that's Absolutely. a lot about what, you know, what great training is about uh, is just having fun. So that's cool. Um, early, early on, uh, were you scared of the ball? Did, did you have some like, you know, a lot of a lot of goalies, myself included, when you first start like there's this natural reaction just to flinch at the shot. Is that something you dealt with? Yeah. So when I first started, I honestly can say I was never really scared of the ball because I didn't really think about it. But after I started playing for a little while and I realized how bad it could hurt at times, I did get a little scared of the ball. So probably about like three years in, I was like, I don't know if I want to be standing in front of this anymore. So there was a little phase that like, I didn't want to like move to the ball anymore or like, I was like, oh, I'm a little hesitant because this is going to hurt. But when I first started, that feeling wasn't there. But as I progressed a little bit more, it became there. Mm -hmm. And like to get over that, I just started doing reps with like, you know, the softballs, like the pinkies or like the white ones that like ECD makes or whatever. Mm -hmm. We just started using those ones. And I think that helped me a lot because I was like, OK, like I got this. Like I don't need to be taking all these reps with these like hard lacrosse balls, which do hurt. So then taking those reps with those softer ones helped me get back into it. And then I was like, Oh, I got this. Like, I don't know what was wrong with me. And then just helped me phase back in. I love it. I love it. Um, that's interesting. I I've seen that, um, what you just talked about where it's like, you start out at, you know, where you're just starting, right. And you're just using your natural reaction, uh, natural abilities. So you're like, you're here. And then like, you start to learn a little bit about the position and you actually go down a goalie's level yeah. kind of goes down because now like you're overthinking in your head and you're not just relying on your athletic ability, but then obviously it goes way, it goes up and it goes higher than you were before because you now understand yep. the skills, but you were kind of talking about that from a perspective of being scared of the ball. Same thing. Like you have no idea what you're doing. Then you learn a little bit and you get scared <laughs> of the ball like, and oh, then, <laughs> yeah. And then it goes away. It's interesting. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Did you wear like protection padding when you first started? I was a kid in like the full, like the big chunky um, shin guards, the big like things. And then my coach was like, all right, I'm like, you're in middle school now. We need to at least like get you down to like the thinner shin guards. And like, that was a big step for me. But then as soon as I hit high school, I tried to never like wear anything. But all through when I first started, I was in like all the gear. I was like, I don't want to get hit in the legs. Like that is not for me. Yeah, it's a good. I mean, it's not, I don't think it should be for any youth goalie. Um, you know, I, I'm a huge protection of, especially when you're getting started, get, get padded up because, um, I mean, you could be having a great training session, having fun and then boom, you take one right in the thigh or the calf or the inner thigh. And you're just, just like, so yeah, I don't, I would rather not be here anymore. So yep. it's a quick change. Yeah. Right. It can go South really quick. That's <laughs> Um, what's your least favorite spot to get hit by the way, while we're on this topic? Oh, uh, inner thigh for sure. Inner, inner thigh. Easy. Especially yeah. when they just skim you and then like, it hurts even worse when they go in. I know. 
Yeah, that's why the inner thigh is so brutal. Is because usually when you get hit there at the angle it is, like the ball oh, also, also goes in. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah, it's the worst. Um, lacrosse goalies can usually all tell the story or like the, the life cycle of a bruise. You know, oh, like it yep. starts starts out at just a little red dot on your leg and then just like takes on a life of its own from there. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Yeah. And then there's always concern, like out in public, they're like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right. Um, especially for girls who wear a little shorter shorts and, and I you know. Know. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So, you know, every goalie kind of plays a little bit um, of a different style. You know, what is the, what is the Emily Sterling style? How would you describe how, how you play? So I definitely would say I play a little more traditional than most of the goalies right now. I definitely have like a narrower stance. My base isn't as wide. I'm definitely a little more straight up than leaning forward. A lot of goalies right now, I feel like our stance is like really flat. Like our legs are super wide. We're like leaning more into it from the back and the butt. I feel like I sit down more. So I'm a little more looking like I'm sitting like in a chair, or like in a wall squat or wall sit with my legs a little narrower than we've been seeing. Um, arc wise, I would say I play like not a super high arc, but it's not a flat arc. It's somewhere right in between. I don't like getting caught too far back or too far forward. I feel a little more vulnerable in both of those directions. So there's like a happy medium for me. And then like step wise, I'm definitely between a, um, lateral step and a 45. I don't, wouldn't say I'm either of those. If I had to pick something, I'd be at like 37 degree, honestly. Um, <laughs> I like combining the two because there's times I practice just my 45s and there's times I practice just my laterals. And I think it's really important to have both because there's different scenarios that both are really helpful in. So I think it's awesome to be able to switch between the two and also like combine the two for different sorts of saves that you need to do. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. It's a great point. It's a great point. Like sometimes, yeah, coming out at that 45 uh, makes a, makes a lot of sense, um, you know, especially when it's a, it's a it's a real outside shot. They're like from distance, yeah. which you don't see as much in the women's game. Um, Not you know, traditionally, but I feel like we've been seeing a lot more of it recently. Like especially watching NCAA this year, like Division One, there was a lot more outside shots. And I mean, granted, it was only my first year playing in the NCAA, but like mm -hmm. it still seems like a lot more shots than like there traditionally is. Obviously. Yeah, well, as I mean, all the rules and all the stick technology and, and the girls are getting stronger, like it just all goes towards the offense. So I, I would anticipate seeing, starting to see a lot more shots outside as, you know, they make these sticks that can just shoot it way faster than, than years prior. <laughs> one of the guys, I was working at camp yesterday and one of the guys like picked up the stick that, um, the field stick that my um, teammates have. And they were like, I can shoot my same shot with this stick as like my stick. And I'm like, oh, that's really encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sad. laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you used to never see like a low to high shot in the women's game because it was literally impossible with the stick. And now, I mean, you tell me, you see it all the time, right? All the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. All right. So, so you're playing on the travel team. Um, did you ever play in the field, by the way? Like, I guess you started out in the field, but once you converted over into goalie, was it like a 50, 50 split or you're like, all right, that's it. I'm the goalie. Once I transitioned, I was like full on, like in, like I never, I played field. I think like just for fun, like in some practices, like just to be like, Oh, end of the year practice. Let's, let me just get out there. Or like there was one game, one game I played for a club. I played for Skywalkers. We were just beating up on a team. It was the end of the mm. tournament. They pretty much already won it. And they were like, and you want to play field? I was like, yeah, let's do it. I was probably in like eighth grade. They let me take the draw. They let me score. I was like, I just need to have a little bit of fun. But no, as soon as I stepped in the goal, it was never like a split 50-50 sort of deal. It was just, I'm a goalie now and that's how it is. Awesome. Awesome. Goalie for life. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so then how did your high school playing career go? So I went to John Carroll High School, which is a private high school right near my house, literally like five minutes walking distance, which is awesome. Um, so I was on varsity for all four years. I didn't play much my freshman year. I got some time, but not a ton. And then I started my sophomore, junior and senior year. Nice. And you are a part, let's see, 
you are a sophomore now. So were you recruited like with the, with the new rules where they, you know, before they could start recruiting goalies really at any age. Uh, now it's, you know, junior year. How, how did the recruiting process go for you? So I actually had committed October of my freshman year of high school. So it was very early for me. I'd started my recruiting process in around Easter of eighth grade. Got it. So you were part of the old, the old rules. Yeah. Interesting. I Interesting. Yeah. How did, how did that go for you? I mean, you said you didn't even start your freshman year. Like, I guess they just took a look at your tournament and your club, kind of your club play. And, and that's how you got recruited. Yeah. So all of my recruiting was completely through my club team. Mm -hmm. So it was super weird going on these visits in eighth grade spring when I wasn't even sure where I was going to high school because I was looking at private high schools at the time too so yeah. I was like I'm looking to go to colleges the same time I'm trying to figure out which high school I'm going to that was a super weird feeling for me like I remember Easter of my eighth grade year um Easter break I went out to visit Denver and that was like really weird because then like I remember coming back and I visited like another private school for high school. And I was like, I was just on a college visit and now I'm on a high school visit. And it was like a weird balance because I was trying to compare the, like all of them at the same time. And I remember like, I had like all these pros and cons lists and I had like my high school list and my college list at the same time. And that was just really weird for me. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be weird. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no offense to you, but I'm glad they changed the rule because that's oh, just- Oh no, I'm so glad they changed the rule. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're what, 12, 13 years old, like yeah. trying to figure out, you know, where you're going to spend your college years, which yep. is, it's a big, de it's a big decision um, in a way. I mean, in, in another way, like, you know, I, I think a lot of goalies are, and a lot of athletes will be fine wherever they end up. Yeah. I really, I really do. I, and, but you obviously need to go do due diligence and find out like, is this coach for me? Is this program for me? Is this school for me? Um, but there's probably a couple of universities that like fit that. I think, what do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So what was it about Maryland that you liked so much? So I immediately just fell in love with like the environment of the team. So I was, I visited them. I think it was it was early fall of my freshman year of high school and I had my visit was on a Monday but they were having like a little like clinic on that Saturday before mm -hmm. and so they had asked me to like just come down for the clinic just because I was coming Monday just to get like on campus just to see everything before like I was there for my visit and so I went and I'm just like walking to the camp, like not really expecting anything, just expecting to just like play some lacrosse for a couple of hours, go home, then come back on Monday. But the coaches like immediately came up to me. I was talking to Kathy and I was like, I felt like I had known her for years in our first conversation that we had. I was like, this is my first time meeting her. I feel like I could talk to her forever right now, which is like really important to me. I was like, if I feel like I should be comfortable talking to my coach. So that was huge. And then I came back from my visit on Monday with my dad and my mom. And it, the environment was just awesome. We went to a practice, we got to sit in on a practice and um, Meg D who was a freshman at the time had ended up red shirting. So she was injured. So she was sat on the sidelines with us and just talked the entire time. And you could just tell from her how much, how much she loved it. Like how genuine the coaches were, how great the practices were. And like the energy was awesome. The girls were cheering each other on. They were going so hard and it was just so fun. The coaches were joking around, but like it was so intense. And I loved that sort of energy, that sort of vibe. And I thought it was like amazing. And you could tell from like talking to Meg that there were like actual, like her stories were like real, like she wasn't making them up. She wasn't just trying to like be like, oh, just come to my school. Like there was like genuine, like this is how I feel about this school. And like, there was so much pride in like just being a Terp. And I thought that was absolutely awesome because lacrosse is such a team sport and to have that sort of like companionship and sort of family environment on a team was so important to me. And I felt like I was home there and I'm a homebody. I love being home. I wanted to be close to home. So just having that like immediate, like feeling of being at a home away from home as soon as I stepped onto campus was absolutely huge for me and that just sealed the deal yeah that's amazing it's an amazing story um and i also read you love the the dining hall food too is this is this true 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that is true. <laughs> all right, all right. They got they got that. That's that's just the cherry, the cherry on top. That's Absolutely. You, huh? What about um? Let's see. What about like the other goalies that were already at Maryland? Did that does that factor into your decision? Like the you know Megan Taylor obviously played before you, right? Like does that like I get to play with this you know, with this caliber of goalie, does that go into your decision at all? Absolutely. I mean, I knew I wanted to go to a program that would just like take me from like here to like here. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted a chance to win a national championship. I wanted all of that. So I think like looking at the caliber of goalies, like the people who are above me and like what I can look up to and like who like role models that I have in that aspect, I think is absolutely was huge for me because I knew I wanted to be a part of that. And I knew I wanted to be like part of that line. Like no matter where I went, I just wanted to like continue like a line of just like awesome goalies. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of like goalies that you learned from and sort of looked up to when you were, you know, when you were learning the position, who, who comes to mind for you? Oh, absolutely. Megan Taylor easily she was awesome <laughs> yeah uh well we'll talk about her really Any, anyone else or just just her I mean she was definitely my main one I mean mm. my coaches from home like Scott Bankowski I did really look up to him when I was like a lot younger and I was just starting the position because I didn't really like know that much about lacrosse like I knew the game I knew how to play but like I didn't know about like the history of lacrosse or like where to watch like older kids playing any of that so mainly just him because he was the only like older goalie that I really knew. Mm. That's interesting. That's an interesting comment. Um, and that might be the case for a lot of kids out there listening to this is just, they just don't know where to go yeah. to get better. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with this podcast. That's what we're trying to do, you know, with all the, all the ideas and, and content I put out as that's one resource, but there's a lot, there's a lot of other resources out there. Um, what, what else would you recommend? Like for someone who's in uh, who's a youth goalie right now, who's kind of looking to get better? Right now, honestly, so I was trying to make a plan for these kids I trained the other day and we didn't have like a lot of space on the field. So I knew I couldn't do a ton of shooting. So I was like, wait, I'm kind of out of drills right now. And I just Googled drills and I was just like lacrosse goalie drills. This was like three days ago. And mm -hmm. I was like, all this stuff popped up and I was like, this is awesome. I don't think if I would have Googled this like 10 years ago that this would have been here. So I thought that was awesome. I didn't like, I never thought to like Google anything about like lacrosse goalie, blah, blah, blah before. And I just was like, this is awesome. This is such a great resources. And just like pages of like resources popped up. And I thought that was huge, but like for kids who are just looking for somebody to like look towards or like get advice from, I think just like Social media is huge right now. I think there's mm -hmm. plenty of pages like yours and like plenty others that just promote the position, promote what you're doing, what the principles of the game are. And I think they're just like great resources. Like you have people like Meg Taylor come out on this podcast and you get to hear from her, which is huge. And I don't think that was available like when I first started. So being able to hear from other goalies and like actually have access to other goalies and like get to talk to them, get to hear from them, I think is like absolutely awesome. Cause when I was younger, I couldn't name another goalie in the sport. Yeah, it is awesome. And you know, the other thing is lacrosse goalies, it's a very small knit group, right? Mm -hmm. And like, we take care of each other. So like you might look at these goalies like a Megan Taylor or, um, you know, someone that you really looked up to and really admire and just think they're like this superhero, but like, and they are on the field, but you DM them and they respond. Like, that's how it works. Yep. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I DM'd you, Emily, I'm like, Hey, can I, can we chat about lacrosse goalie? You're like, yeah, I'm in. When, when are we doing it? <laughs> you know? So yep. that's what I love about this community. Yeah, no, that part's definitely awesome. Everybody's just like so eager to talk about it because we're so, it's so little, like, like I said before, like there's like max, like five spots on a team when you get to college. Like, so there's not that many of us out there. So I think like bringing the community together even more. So it's just huge. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so when you get to Maryland, does, does your goalie game change? Does it evolve or, or did you kind of stick with the same style of play? So going into Maryland, so my, I tore my ACL my last game of my 
senior year. So oh, my no. senior season tore my ACL in the last game of that. So I was injured. So I got surgery on May 30th. So I was out all through my freshman fall and I got cleared in January of 2020. So it was like two weeks before our first game, I think. So not only was I coming back from an injury from that I was about that I was out for for about eight months, I was also coming back to Division One lacrosse, and not only that, but to the team with the reigning national champions. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot to come back for or through, and the game had picked up pace so much, and I was looking at all these different sort of shots, and I hadn't played in eight months, so I like really struggled last year. I like didn't feel quick. I didn't feel like I was seeing the ball well enough. I felt slow. I just felt completely off my game. And that obviously like impacted my mental game too. And then, so that was a huge step for me, but um, mainly just like the speed of shots and like the way the ball is moving is so much quicker when you go from high school to college. And I really got to see that in that transition because I got to like take a step back because I wasn't able to play in the fall. I was able to watch it a little bit more and just seeing like how much quicker the ball moves, how much different the shots are coming out. Like you're not just looking at like direct shots anymore. Like you're looking at like lower angle, like shots that you wouldn't expect them to shoot, but they're shooting. And then they're like curving them like opposite corner and you're like Mm -hmm. how how did that just happen so so I've heard all my life that like the game from going from high school to college is like a huge step but it it really is and I didn't really realize that until I got back in the goal and I was like hold up what's going on right now yeah I want to talk about that injury a little bit if we could so um you know like you said one of the most difficult parts of overcoming an injury um, for an athlete, but, but more particularly for a goalie is just the mental, is the mental side, right? Like, yeah, you've got all the physical rehab that you need to do, but like, we're tough. We're athletes. Like we, you can, you can kind of push through that pain. You've done that in your training. Like you, you know how to, you know how to do that. The mental piece is typically the most difficult because you lose that confidence. Right. So I'm curious, like how you went, and you even said it yourself, like you, you sort of lost your, your confidence a bit. How did you go back building that that back up? How'd you get it back? Yeah. So um, I, a huge thing for me was just setting little goals. Um, the little goals didn't even necessarily have to do anything about lacrosse. Like when I first got sh- surgery, like my goal was like putting on my shoe by myself, like putting on my own socks, showering on my own, like walking to the kitchen, carrying something by myself, just like little things because those little things helped me build confidence because I was like gaining my independence again, because I didn't need to be so reliant on like my mom, my dad, my sister or whatever. So that definitely helped. But when I got back to lacrosse, so I got cleared and that was like a huge confidence booster, like getting cleared to play was huge. Cause I'm like, okay, like I can get back to this. I got this, but um, getting back in the goal was actually super humbling (laughs) And I lost a bunch of that confidence because I was like, I finally, like my goal was to play again and I was playing again, but I wasn't playing like myself. I wasn't playing well and I didn't feel good about it. And so at that point, I didn't really know what other goals I could set for myself because I was like, all right, like I achieved like my end goal. My end goal was to be able to play again. So like I'm playing again, like I'm in practices, like I'm playing again. Now what? And so I didn't really know where to go from there because I was like really stuck. I was like, this is hard. Like I got what I, like, I got what I was really working towards, but like, how do I get better right now? Because I'm going to practice every single day, but like, I just don't feel like myself. Like, I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like I'm actually improving in this. Um, And I didn't really get that confidence back, honestly, until our season was canceled for COVID and we were sent home. And then I was just like, all right, like, I'm clearly like not in a good spot right now. I didn't play like myself. And that was like the first time I've ever really not played like myself. And it was a horrible feeling. Like I did not like it at all. And so I just used those COVID months to just like get back to doing what I loved, like just restarting. I was just like, you know what, Em, like you haven't had to restart your process ever. Like you started when you were 11 years old and you've just rolled with it since then. But now like you're a new person, like everything's a little bit different. You have to figure this out. So I literally just went back to the basics. I 
just started working out a little bit more, like a bunch of times a day. I started working with Goalie Smith down in Baltimore and we just like started from the top. I started working on my stepping again, changing my angles just a little bit more because I realized I was a little slower than I was before. And then once I was able to build my strength back up, I was able to get as quick as I was before, maybe a little quicker. And then just working on those little goals. So I was like, all right, I want to get my steps like this. I want to be able to like save all my high shots in this or just be like, okay, these clears are going to be awesome today. And setting those little goals for myself again was what I needed because I needed like to phase back into things. I didn't need to just be like, all right, I got to playing. Here I am. Let's call it a day. Like I needed to like reintroduce myself to everything because I mean, that's what I was doing. Like I had not played for eight months Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I was back. Wow. I love that answer. That, I mean, that's kind of a masterclass and how you overcome, how you overcome uh, an injury. That's, that's really awesome. I love that idea of setting little goals. Um, yeah. You know, I, I talk, I work with kids in the mental game quite, quite a bit. And one of the things we talk about is just is stacking wins. Right. And it's the same concept of like setting these little goals. So I tell them like, Hey, tomorrow I want you to wake up 10 minutes earlier. Um, and when the alarm, you know, uh, sounds get right up, no snooze, right? Can you get that first? And it doesn't re- like, that's not really going to impact your life all that much, but it's like, can we get that first win of the day? Right. And just stack those wins. And it really helps your mental game when you get those little wins. Right. Absolutely. My sister actually, she's in her senior year. She just graduated high school now. And, um, she tore her ACL her senior year of high school as well. And right now on our fridge is her goal chart. It's huge. It takes up like three quarters of the length of the fridge. And it's just her like little things. It's just like one of them is just like bake something new, like read a book, just to get things done and like build on those wins. And like she fills in those boxes and it just makes her feel so good, which is huge. I love that. What what does a goal chart look like? Is it just is it just check boxes? It's or is literally there... she just she's like all neat and artsy. So she like just wrote it out, <laughs> and there's like little boxes and like her neat handwriting next to it. And she just like marks off the box every time she does it. <laughs> smart, a smart. Yeah, I mean the other thing I, I recommend is is that that you write down like your goals or your or your things, and you put them somewhere visible, like right on the. I mean that's smart, right? Yep. I mean that's that's awesome <laughs> stuff. Um. Yeah. And then getting back to basics was the other thing um, that you mentioned, you know, it's so true. So true. Like even like when we go through a slump as a goalie, oftentimes it's just like, you got to hit that reset button and get back to basics. Like your stance, your positioning, your save movement, right? Like just the basic stuff and, and just rebuild it back up. That's how we build our confidence back up. Um, And then training with the goalie Smith brothers never hurts. Those guys are awesome. (laughs) Yeah. They're awesome. (laughs) Uh, awesome. you're, you're gonna say something sorry yeah I was just gonna say how like when I came back I just expected myself to be the same person as I was the same player that I was as before I got injured when like that's just not the case and like it's not fair of yourself to expect that because I mean you're physically like a different person like you went through like a long recovery process like a lot of things changed you had surgery like and it was you were out for eight months like not only did you grow like physically but you also grew mentally and so I don't know why I'd expected myself to be the same physically when I knew I wasn't the same mentally. So mm-hmm. I think that was just like a huge takeaway. Yeah. Great point. The other thing that I've, that I've heard is, and I'm curious about if you went through this, um, is, you know, a lot of athletes, youth athletes, like their identity is lacrosse, right. Mm-hmm. Or lacrosse goalie, right. Mm-hmm. Their Instagram handle is Emily lacrosse goalie. Right. And that's kind of like your, and that's not saying that's yours, but like that, that, that's their identity. And then you take that away. And, and a lot of goalies had this happen with COVID, right? You take that away. And it's like, if I don't have that, then, then who am I? Right. You yeah. kind of lose that identity a little bit. Did you have to battle with that? Yeah, I did. And I actually talked to my mom about this not too long ago. Like once my sister tore ACL, my mom was just kind of like, listen, I'm like, you did this exact same thing. Like she's gonna need to lean on you and I was like obviously and she was just like asking me how I felt about all of it and um I just talked to her about how I was going into Maryland being injured and I'd never been seriously injured before like I'd had like little small things like I might have to sit out of practice but like nothing like extended period of time and 
I remember talking to my mom about like, I got to school and I was obviously friends with all the girls, but I had to figure out how to relate to them in a way other than lacrosse, which was super weird for me because in a team, like our first thing that brings us together is lacrosse. But that part was taken away from me. So when I was going in, I was really nervous. Like I felt a little isolated, like before I even got there, because all these girls over here were playing, like they're out on the field together. And that obviously like brings so much chemistry, like brings all the girls together. But like, I wasn't able to, like I was sitting on the sideline with the other hurt girls. And so I was just kind of like, I need to be able to like find my identity and be able to relate to these girls in a way that's not lacrosse because I'm not able to do that right now. Like, yes, it's what brought us together, but I need to figure out how to like build a relationship that's like not necessarily just on the field, which is how you build your relationship with most teammates. And I think that actually like allowed me to build closer relationships with my teammates because I didn't base it in lacrosse. I based it on like me as a person. I based it on them as a person, like actually like cultivating those relationships, building them up and like supporting each other was like absolutely huge and I definitely learned to like be able to like relate to people more instead of using like part of my identity as like playing lacrosse being a lacrosse goalie being an athlete instead of using that as like a gateway to a friendship I like kind of stepped back and was just like here this is me as a person let's be friends wow I love that that's amazing um what you know so it's kind of like focusing on off the field type of stuff and, and building those relationships that way. Um, Absolutely. yeah, I love it. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, so, so you get to, uh, you know, the 2020 year, um, is canceled, but you get some starts in that year. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. My research is correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question I have for you is, um, you know, I played, I played at Cal in the, in the MCLA and um, I took over the starting role my junior year. And um, the, the goalie that graduated was amazing. He ended up going into the MCLA Hall of Fame, right? So I, so I felt this like level of pressure um, to fill his shoes, so mm-hmm. to speak, right? You have the mm-hmm. same situation at Maryland. I mean, arguably one of the greatest goalies ever, Megan Taylor, graduates, right? Did you, are you guys feeling that pressure to fill those shoes? Honestly, no. Our coaches did a very good job of being like, that was Megan Taylor. She's awesome. She did this. She did that. Whatever. She's like, you are Emily Sterling. You are somebody completely different. We don't want you to be Megan Taylor. Those are two completely different people and you need to like not relate those. So I honestly like Sometimes it would be like in the back of my mind, I'd be like, oh, like, I wonder if Meg ever struggled with this. Like, I wonder if she ever felt this way, but I never necessarily felt the pressure to be her or to play like her or to do the things that she did because our coaches like didn't like acknowledge it in that way. Nobody else on the team did. They were like, all right, that was Megan Taylor. She was awesome. She's like, sadly, she's gone now. That's just how it is. But like, now we need a new goalie because she's not here and like we want that new goalie to be herself like we don't need her to be Megan Taylor because that just wouldn't work out so I never luckily never felt that pressure and I think that's like largely due to my teammates and to my coaches because they like allowed me to just be myself and play like myself as long as as well as my other two goalies on my team and we didn't like feel the pressure to be Megan Taylor we were like just for like all right just be ourselves and we'll walk into the role ourselves. Yeah. Smart coaching, smart coaching and good, good tip for all the, you know, anybody who enters that situation, um, you don't have to be that, that goalie that graduated, right? Like you are your own unique person, your own unique goalie. Um, and you're going to be great, but you don't need to be that. Uh, you don't need to be that person that just graduated. So great, great coaching point right there. Um, you know, when, when you guys train, uh, at Maryland, the goalies, what, what does it look like? Are you doing a lot of drills, hand-eye coordination, a lot of live shots? What's kind of your training regimen? So we love our goalie world. We're always together, the three of us, but um, we do a lot of hand-eye stuff. Like if the other girl, like if the rest of our teammates, like they don't need like a goalie yet, like we are like all for hand-eye. We're like, let's mm-hmm. juggle. Let's do like three-man juggling. Let's do like our ball drop drills, like all in for it. So we 
huge fans of hand eye stuff. Um, sometimes we'll pull our um, assistant coach Caitlin over to the side and she'll do some shots with us. We do a bunch of like inside and outside sweeps. Those are like our main two main thing that we go to as well as like some eight meters, obviously a huge part of the game, but those are like our three like go-tos and like, we're always just like kind of clearing to each other on the side. That's like, I wouldn't really call that like a drill though, but Mm -hmm. those are like main things. Awesome. So the outside sweep would be like, they start kind of outside the eight meters sweep across and sweep like kind of in and take a shot. Going to the outside sweep. So we'll start like probably in between the second inside hash and the first inside or second inside hash and center hash. And then they'll sweep towards the outside of the eight and come down that lane towards the outside. And then we'll do the inside sweeps, which is just starting on that outside and then curling in through the middle. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, how do you, you know, what, what would you say the Emily Sterling style of leadership is? Um, so I'm very vocal. I like being in a conversation, like not necessarily loud vocal, but just conversation vocal. Like if I'm in like goal, I fully expect like my two defenders who are next to me just to be in a conversation. And like, it's nothing loud. Like if you're probably standing at the top of the eight, you can probably like barely hear us talking, but we're just like, all right, like there's two girls behind them. Like, okay, there's one on our right. There's one on our left. And it's just me like in this like pitch, like in this tone, just like being in a conversation and I think the conversation is like what makes like our defense trust each other a little bit more and a little bit more free-flowing because it's not as like commanding or like directive you're just kind of like all right like this this is how it is right now like this is what's happening just so we're all aware and then once something does happen we know where everyone is so then I'm able to be like all right we need a slide here second slide go blah 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 and then we're able to like adjust from it from there but yeah, that's what I would mainly sum it up as. Awesome. Just a little more conversative. Awesome. Um, so you get the start. Uh, your some starts in you know your freshman year season gets canceled, and then um, you come back your sophomore year and win the starting job um, outright. Um, congratulations! Have a great year. I have some uh, saves from the Big Ten championship game. Could we? Could I share my screen? We could take a look at yeah. them and talk through them. Absolutely. All right. Um, share screen. All right. Uh, you, you can see this big 10. Yep. Okay. And in that goals against average on the other side, if I'm in this huddle right here, what's, what's, what's goalie Emily Sterling saying to me in the pregame pump up huddle. Honestly, we're just, just talking about like how much fun we're going to have. <laughs> we're like, all right, like we're about to do what we love. Like we've been, this is our, I think this was our third time playing Northwestern this season. And we were just like, we know what's coming at us. We're prepared. Like, let's just do it. Like it's super calm. Like none of us are like, let's go. Like none of us are like yelling. We're just like, all right, like we know what we're doing. Like, let's just go out there and execute it. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. Um, So first save, I want to take a look at is this one right here. And by the way, so you got the knee brace on, you know, how's the knee feeling right now? So it honestly feels great. I'm happy to say that I'm now out of the brace. I wanted to lose it halfway through the season this past year, but I'm a very superstitious person. And I just felt like losing a brace halfway through a season would just be like bad vibes, bad mojo somehow. So I was just like, keep it on, finish out through the season. We'll lose it through the summer. Nice. (laughs) yeah goalies are superstitious people you know and and Absolutely. if something's working you can't you can't switch it up yeah. i was like all right i gotta keep it on i'm like just finished to season m yeah uh so this first save we're looking at here is an eight meter uh free position shot what uh you know what what's your kind of general strategy on these talk us through you know what what you're looking at and, and how you approach these type of uh plays so I love eight meter shots. As Megan Taylor says, she's like, she thinks eight meter shots are awesome because it's like your opportunity to just play lacrosse. Like you don't have to think about anything. You just do like, you just react because it is all based on reaction. Like there's nothing else to watch except for the ball. Like that's just how it is. So at this moment, like I'm just kind of standing there. She's getting set up. I'm about to get set up. I'm just getting my positioning right. I usually, I don't stand any higher or lower when it comes to eight meters. I stand usually about in the same spot. Um, I look at the shooter's tendencies. I see that she looks like she's about to run it in a little bit because she's in that forward position. She's not winding up at least 
not off the first step. So I'm going to adjust to that, probably get my body ready. I keep my arms just a little bit closer in so I can explode out a little bit more. And it also gives me a half a second more to react to that shot. Um, I'm just like assessing who's around, what's open, like possible passes that she can have off that, um, off that shot, off that eight meter. And then I'm just like adjusting. And I just like kind of tell myself like, you love eight meters and like this, this is your thing. Like, let's, let's just do it. Let's have some fun. Um, and I just like, I'm like, just focus on the ball. That's it. Like nothing else will tell you where she's shooting except just focus on the ball, just react to it and just have some fun. I just need to relax and just be like, you're fast. You got this. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Is that what you're doing right here with the point? Just kind of like position, you know, kind of pointing out a possible pass that could happen. Yep. 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 So like during that time when she's setting up and we're all setting up, I'm just kind of surveying around. I'm just seeing possible looks. Like if, if we're looking at this screen, like we see Lizzie could slide to the ball and then maybe number one is open, like on her back door. Mm. So just like being aware of these possible looks to see and just making sure our defense is on the same page because we want to figure out like where number 28 who fouled is like where she's going to recover to. So make sure we have like everything covered after the shot. Love it. Love it. Let's take a look. Wait, hang on. Pin zone, staring down Maryland netminder Emily Sterling. Steps in, oh. fires. What a save! So she ends up, she ends up sort of taking, you know, a couple steps in, and then takes the shot. And there's, you know, two of your defenders providing pretty good coverage. Like, are you? What are you seeing on this play? Are you still in a read and react mode, or? You know, are, you, are we doing the goalie Smith read him and beat him at this point? Yeah, so I'm kind of just like reading and reacting, honestly, because you saw that everybody else moved on the screen. But for these past like couple seconds, when from the whistle blew, like we saw the girl with the ball move, we saw my two defenders move in, but I just haven't moved at all. I'm yeah. in the very still standstill, like have <laughs> like I might have sunk my arm, bottom arm down just a little bit but I'm just kind of waiting to see what she's doing because she, at this point, like she could have like came and cut across the creek. She could have crawled um, to the close pipe and like dropped it over my shoulder. So I was just waiting to see like what her path of movement is. And then as soon as I saw that wind up, that's when I was going to react. But until then I want to stay still and just like wait for her like to make the first move. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, great save. And Thank then, you. man, there's this camera angle, this right here. This is amazing. <laughs> I know this is awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually interviewed a couple, uh, like a week ago, the other, the other goalie, Madison Doucette. I don't know if you know her. Uh, not personally, no, okay. but I know her of through her. Her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we were talking about how great this camera angle is. If you're, if you're just listening to the audio, it's like right behind the goal, but it's like zoomed in. I, so you can I see- I had no idea it was there. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the other goal on the far side. I mean, it's like, it's really cool. It's a really cool camera angle. And let me get that over here. So then you can see, you know, kind of exactly what you're seeing, you know, at this point, um, it'd be very tough for her to shoot low. Just like looking yeah. at this play, like two sticks are kind of preventing her from really shooting that low. And then yeah. she ends up shooting it kind of at your shoulder and I don't know, ends up getting it to the hip, huh? Yeah, I would say it was like a, like a hip shot. Mm-hmm. Anyway, great save. Um, what goes through your mind on the clears? So like you make the save, boom, right there. What's, talk us through it. So I get really excited. I absolutely love clearing the ball. I think it's, it might be my favorite part of the game. I just think it's like, you can do so many things with it. And like, it's the one time, like you're like in control of the ball. So like, it's like a really like special point as a goalie. And I think like clearing is what like, can make a goalie stand out from being a good goalie to a great goalie because not every goalie can clear the ball like very well. So I like take pride in clearing. I think it's really fun. Like you're, you're completely in charge. Like we're not usually completely in charge of what the ball, like what the ball is doing. So this is your time to like really like show out and like be a little creative and just see what's going on. So at this point, I'm just like, all right, awesome save. Now let's, now my job is to just get the ball to our attack. Let's get it down on the other side of the field so we can put it in back in the back of the other net. So um, I don't really remember how long we were on defense for this set before this shot happened, but 
if we're, we were on defense for a while, like I'll try to slow it down a little bit, give my defenders and my middies, like just a little breather before like pushing the ball up the field, just so we don't have to be gassed getting the ball up there and then recovering. Cause that can be really hard when the attackers are like at our trail, like trying to get the ball back. So if not though, I'll look for those um, high cuts from the middies or those low cuts from the defense just to get it out of the back. Yeah. That's one thing that's really, um, different in the women's game is you can just be more like relaxed on the clears because <laughs> you got 10 seconds to like get it out of the crease. Like in the men's game, you got the four seconds and yep. you, you know, like you got to go. Um, it's like, I, I look to the middies, look to the middies, look to my, my side defensemen. And if they're not there, I gotta, I gotta leave. Yep. Um, and they're also like, just because of the nature of the game. I mean, look, how at, look all this traffic. Like it's, you know, yeah. so many people are like close to the goal. Right so it there. makes sense to just wait and let people kind of get to their positions and then, and then leave the clear. Um, all right, 238, wait, did I miss one right here? Yeah, here's one right here. Going against the defense of Maddie Sanchez. Game now, inside shot, save Sterling. Wow. Talk us through this play if you remember it. So, like I said before, this was our third time playing them this season already. So we knew tendencies. We knew what they liked to do. We knew their looks. And as soon as I saw um, Izzy Skane in this 1v1, I knew that there was probably going to be a drive right afterwards. So I was ready for it. I wasn't surprised that she was going for that outside lane to curl back in for the drive, for the dodge, for the drive. I was fully expecting it. So I was set. Um, nothing crazy really going on in my head. I was just like, just watch the stick, watch the body. As soon as she came up so high with her hands and was so close in, we were able to jam her hands up. So I knew that the shot couldn't pull low, even mm -hmm. if she tried, like she would have to take somebody out to be able to do that. So I knew I had to meet her high and I just met her on that angle with the crease, just stepped out to my left, used definitely a little bit more of a lateral step on that one. Like I know before we talked about our 45s versus our laterals. And I think that was one of my ones in between, probably a little bit more lateral and just saw that her stick was going high. So I met her high and just exploded to that angle that she was at. Yeah, you did. Look at that. I mean, this is just amazing top hand. Bam, just amazing <laughs> top hand explosion. Uh, great, great learning tool. That's why I love looking at saves so much with, with the youth. I mean, it's like, you know, watch what the best do and replicate that. So that's awesome save. Awesome save. And give, give it a couple twirls just to, just to. <laughs> I know. Good, I huh? always. I never realized I did that until I watched it. I'm like, oh, I don't like the way that looks. I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see a lot of goalies do that. So, uh, two thirty eight is the one I want. Oh wait, We're, this is like my favorite play. I made a reel of this one. I don't know if you saw this. I did see it. That was awesome. All right, cool. Uh, let's watch this play. Oh wait, hang on. This one right here. Oh, wow. What a play by Sterling. What a play. Holy smokes. We've seen Doucette do that. Not, we have not. Anytime you can get a reaction like that of the announcers where they, they go, oh, <laughs> you're doing something right. So if you're just listening, if you're just listening to the audio, you're, you're in the crease. You're in the crease. You're in your stance. And then the girl kind of tries to make a pass. Uh, to her teammate coming from around X to, to goal line extended. And you just read the play and stick out that stick, fight through some body contact and win possession, sprint to the corner with two girls on you, do this like real athletic turnaround and just outlet it. And then what do they, what do they call right here? Like an interference type of thing? Yeah, they just called like cross body check. And then we were able to get clear out after that. Yeah. So kind of going back to this play, like at what point, is, I, I assume this is something you've practiced um, and worked on, but at what point do you know, like, all right, I'm going to go get it. So in high school, I was a super active goalie. Like I was always out of the crease. Like sometimes they're like, all right, I'm like, bring it back in, like, come on. Um, and then, so my freshman year of college, like I just didn't do it. Like I was just coming back. Like I was still like green in the sense that like, I just got cleared from my injury. Like the way I tore my ACL was being outside the goal. So I was just like, definitely a little more hesitant. My coaches had told me like, not to go out to just like kind of stay home. And so I didn't really do it at all my freshman year. And then my sophomore year, 
I was like started to feel more confident. I just told you how I was like re- ready to lose the brace at this point that I was just like, I can't do it yet. Like just some bad, something bad will happen. So I was just like, I was feeling good. And like, I was confident. Like I used to intercept passes all the time in high school. And so like, that was like kind of my thing. Like I absolutely loved it. And at this point in the game, we're like getting to the end. We have what, three minutes left in the first half. We're tied up. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew we were a player down. We had just gotten a yellow card. I'm pretty sure down on the other end of the field. So I was like looking at my defense and I could tell that I knew where the six girls were. Like my six defenders are all in front of me. And I knew that there was a girl behind. So naturally the next look for that offense would be to that for them to be curling around the crease and just get a little dump shot on me. And I'm did not want to see that shot at all at this time. So I was just like, okay, she's curling right on my crease. Like this is an easy pass and it's on my stick side. So like, it's easy just to reach out, extend to that one and just grab it. And so I was like, I don't want her to see me baiting that pass too much because then she won't pass it and she could just drive and have an empty net essentially. So I held at this point, you can see I dropped my bottom hand. My left hand is at the end of my stick right now. Usually I hold it higher, but I, seen that this play was setting up. So I'd begin to drop my left hand to the bottom of my stick so I could reach out and have that extension if she were to curl wider, which she did. And so then I was able to reach out all the way without having to make that adjustment midway going for that catch. And then I was just like, all right, I got to keep my feet moving to keep possession of this ball. And that's just what I did. Wow. Great play. And then this athleticism here of the stick handling, just kind of, you know, young girl, young goalies out there. Could you make that type of move where you're running away? Oh crap. How do I, what do I do now? Right. You know, like being able to do that outlet, like you could do a little sh- backhand shovel pass to this goal right here. Yeah. That's an option. You could flip around like you did. And um, I mean, there's a wide open girl, maybe not wide open, but she's open. Um, but yeah. they, they end up, you know, contacting you and you guys get the possession. Right. Great play. And then there's a bunch of different highlights of this play, um, man, including including our favorite camera angle right here. This, our this favorite this, camera this, angle. <laughs> this, yeah, this is this is a cool uh, shot of you dropping, you know, your hand to that to the bottom of the stick, kind of getting ready to shoot out. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, that one got me pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's check out this one right here. They move the ball around. Skein has had the hot hand for Northwestern. Working her matchup. Quick move. Save Sterling. Terrific goaltending. Both ends of the field. All right. Uh, talk us through this play if you can. All right. So at this point, now we have, what, 45 seconds left on the clock for the first half. We're still tied at seven. We had just came back. We had just gotten that ball from that man down play we just came back brought it to the other end of the field was able to kill off the penalty so we were even now which was huge for us um unfortunately they had gotten the ball back and the last time we played them we went into the half tied 7-7 as well and then it just didn't go well for us after that but we were playing a lot better than we were we were all feeling it like our defense was on our offense were was on like we were just like we were confident in each other we were moving right once again, Izzy was set up at the top of this right, the right hand side of the eight. I know her dodges. She has a power shot. This girl can rip the ball. So I knew I didn't want to step. We talked about our stepping angles before. Um, right now, definitely a little more lateral than forward because she can shoot so fast. I want to allow myself that time to get to the ball. So as she's coming across, I see her hands are high. She's, I think she's pretty obvious when she's shooting low or shooting high. I was just, I've watched her shoot a lot now. Like we watched a lot of film on just her shots and just like reading her shoulders, reading her body, reading the body angle and just like kind of like anticipating, not guessing, but just anticipating where she's going to shoot. So she had her stick almost parallel to the ground going into this shot and the tip, the front tip of her head was faced upwards a little bit. So I could tell that it was going to be a high shot. It would be really hard to pull low in this instance. The lowest she could probably get is like, the hips maybe so I wasn't expecting to go down to my knees or anything or make those like low saves like on that lateral angle so I was expecting something high just didn't know where and then when you saw her pull all the way across to her left shoulder I knew it was coming somewhere close to my body because she couldn't pull to my left corner my top left corner at this point 
because of how hard she pulled across. So I knew it was coming somewhere to like mid side of my body to the right side. And then I just exploded from there. I didn't really step much on that one because it came in so quick. I was just able to explode upwards to it. Yeah. And it kind of, it kind of looks like it's at, you know, at your body o- over your head a little bit. Um, but great save. I want to talk about um, just the, you know, the moving on the arc. Cause I think it's something that is not talked about enough with youth goalies and, you know, a goal, a youth, a youth goalie the other day asked me, how do I get better when I watch tape? I'm just like, watch the goalies. <laughs> a lot of people watch the ball and the defender and the shot, uh, but yeah. watch this, you know, you're on, you're on the pipe. Cause she's, you know, pretty much at the, almost at the end of the little uh, arc right here. And then um, it's funny, the play that we watched before she faked to the outside and cut inside. And this mm-hmm. time she fakes to the inside and you can see the defender kind of bites on it a little bit uh, yeah. and, go, and goes and she goes to the center and then rips it. But watch that little, you know, adjustment step right there, moving on the yep. arc, bam, right? Like you're in great position here, knees bent. And you can kind of see like what you talked about in your stance, a little bit narrower than, than a yep. lot of goalies might be, but still in a great athletic position uh, when that shot is released. So I like that. Thank you. Yeah, cool. I think moving on the arc, just to make a point about that, I think it's yeah. like super important to make your moves on your arc so deliberate. I was training some kids the other day and I was just talking about the importance of when you move to have as minimal adjustment steps as possible because we don't want to be moving our feet a ton because we can be caught off balance. It can shoot the shot to where we just came from. And if we're off balance going too far one way, it's super hard to pull back for us the other direction. So cutting down on our number of steps and making those moves deliberate. So as soon as we step one step across, of our arc just like becoming recentered like rebalanced and just holding that angle yep 100 percent agree love it all right um what's this play here pass forward and fill on the backside yep. for northwestern offensively mueller quick feed inside behind the back denied emily sterling great reflexes that was great reflexes so she uh you know, they they have the ball outside the second arc. They feed it into the crease and the girl rips it behind the back shot and you're right on it, which is amazing because oftentimes like that, I mean, she's literally standing on the crease, like a foot above the <laughs> crease. And like, just you're, you're expecting her to shoot from a normal angle and then whew, they rip it behind the back. Like how did, were you kind of like reading that play? So the last time we played them, they ripped, behind the back on me it was a beautiful shot (laughs) gotta give him all the credit in the world for it and so I was just like after that happened I was like that is not happening again (laughs) so I was like kind of the entire time I was like all right Em they could pull a BTP on you at any moment like just be ready but um at this point I was kind of reading her and like you could see I was adjusting to my right on this because her momentum was going that way but then I saw that my defender had crashed in on that side so for her to pull that lefty shot around our defender would have resulted with her in a yellow card. So I was like, all right, like this isn't a good time for her to just normally shoot. So I was like, uh oh, here comes the BTB. And so, cause you can see I'm adjusting to my right as if she's gonna like, go that way right now. And then I see her pulling back above her left shoulder to rip that behind the back because of my defender being in the position that she is in. So then I just readjusted quick and was able to explode up. Nice. Love it. Explain that rule to me because there's, in all honesty, there's parts of the women's lacrosse game um, that, that I do not know. But so it, she has the ball here and she goes to like, I can't just shoot around her on the hip. You can shoot around her, but your stick cannot make contact with her body. You can't follow through into her body and the ball cannot hit a player on the field. So if that were to happen, they would ha- get a yellow card and they would have to sit out for two minutes. Got or it. until my like the other team scores. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, that was really fun. Thank you for kind of sharing with us behind the scenes of, of some of those plays. I mean, I think those are great learning moments and, and just to hear, you know, your thought process and some of the training that you've done that goes into making those saves and what you're thinking about, I think is a great learning tool for a lot of youth goalies. So I hope they, they take advantage of that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, Emily, good luck in the upcoming season. We'll certainly be, uh, we'll certainly be watching. Thank you for being so generous with your time today and kind of taking us through that was that was tons of fun um 
you know, if people want to get a hold of you, what uh, is there a place they should go? Yeah, you can email me at m.sterling1 at gmail.com. I'm happy to answer any questions, provide any insight. I'm, I mean, I'm here to help you guys out. I love the game. I love the position. I just love everything about it. So please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I promise you'll get an email back. Awesome. Um, what about Instagram? Do you do Instagram? Yes, absolutely. Just same thing. M.Sterling. Easy, just like that. Feel free to DM me. We'll absolutely respond. All right. Um, a few more questions. What is your uh, stick setup? What do you go with? Um, so I have an Under Armour headline. I'm very bad with my setup and everything. I don't know the technical stuff, um, but I like it. I have one shooting string in it, throwing string, um, nothing fancy. I'm kind of just like, give it to me. I'll play with it, but I like it. Works for me. Does the trick. Pretty sturdy, stable. I can get those ground balls. I love when I'm able, when I'm out of the crease to be able to just like hold my stick at the bottom and just like be able to handle it while it's all the way out and like for the ball to hold. And that's very important to me. And it does a very good job. Yeah. Do you string your own heads or does someone else do it? I do not. I get them strong. <laughs> all right. Me too. I'm a horrible <laughs> stick stringer. I know. Um, awesome. Emily, if you had to leave the goalies out there with one final piece of advice, what would that be? Okay. Um, definitely just like stick with it. Like if you love it, like I promise it will hundred percent pay off. Like it takes a lot, like there's a lot that goes into the position and it's a lot of work. It's not, it's nothing that's just going to come to you super easily. Like we've all had our challenges, like even the best of the best have like challenged with their own things, but um, definitely just like keep working at it, ask questions. Like we talked about how close knit the goalie community is earlier. And like, it really is like, people are willing to help people want to see you succeed. Like I want to see like the younger goalies out there succeed now. So we're all willing to help. Like, please reach out, please ask questions, like provide feedback to us. Even I just think it's like huge. Just put yourself out there, build the community. It'll be the best thing for you. Em, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.